day 207 of the Trump administration. And today, when the African-American CEO of Merck Pharmaceuticals resigned from the president's manufacturing council, it took the president 54 minutes to attack him on Twitter. Now to the reason why the Merck CEO resigned. It took the president two days to criticize the presence of neo-Nazis and white supremacists on the streets in our country, which this weekend resulted in Charlottesville in a loss of life. And tonight, after a grim weekend for the American presidency, the president of the United States is back at Trump Tower. You're looking at a live picture. And in part because of what happened this weekend, the crowds are large and loud in Midtown. Manhattan, about five blocks from here. We have for you tonight a look at the president's comments just after 3.30 p.m. on Saturday afternoon and then over 45 hours later today back at the White House. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. We are starting to learn what was going on behind the scenes during those 45 intervening hours. Associated Press correspondent Jonathan Lemire, who will join us here momentarily, reports, loath to re appear to be admitting a mistake, Trump was reluctant to adjust his remarks. The president expressed anger to those close to him about what he perceived as the media's unfair assessment of his remarks, believing he had effectively denounced all forms of bigotry. Several of Trump's senior advisors, including new chief of staff John Kelly, had urged him to make a more specific condemnation, warning that the negative story would not go away and that the rising tide of criticism from fellow Republicans on Capitol Hill could endanger his legislative agenda, according to two White House officials. And the president is still blaming the media, writing this on Twitter tonight, made additional remarks on Charlottesville and realized once again that the the fake news media will never be satisfied. Truly bad people. Put another way, his statement today was to satisfy the news media, not to satisfy Americans that what we saw in Charlottesville this weekend does not define who we are. It did seem to define the alt-right, though, the grab bag of nationalist causes and then some represented in the Tiki Torch March on the UVA campus Friday night. Another story from the AP tonight carries the headline, White Nationalist, Charlottesville, Just a Beginning. It quotes a leader of the movement named Matthew Heimbach as saying, we're going to be more active than ever before. Richard Spencer, a prominent member of the alt-right, held a press conference today, said the following about the president. We saw in Donald Trump someone who wasn't a conservative. Donald Trump never talked about tax, or at least during the campaign. He never talked about tax cuts. He never talked about all these, you know, he was not all this just kind of conservative garbage that we've been hearing for years. He talked about immigration first and foremost. He was a nationalist. He used phrases like America first. All, Donald Trump is not alt-right. Donald Trump is not an identitarian. But we were connected with Donald Trump on this kind of psychic level where Donald Trump was a nationalist. He was the first true, authentic nationalist in my lifetime. That was from this afternoon. There is also this tonight. The latest daily tracking numbers from Gallup show this could be indeed hurting the president's job approval rating. This is a poll, mind you, taken from Friday to Sunday, showing President Trump at a new record low of 34 percent. After all that, let's bring in our leadoff panel tonight. As we mentioned, White House reporter for the Associated Press, Jonathan Lemire, whose voice you heard last week peppering the president with questions at Bedminster. He was also on hand for the president's remarks Saturday and today at the White House. Former U.S. Congressman Harold Ford, Democrat of Tennessee, now an MSNBC political analyst. And with us from Washington, Charlottesville native Anita Kumar, also a UVA grad. More on that in a bit. White House correspondent for for McClatchy newspapers. Welcome to you all. Jonathan, I'd like to begin with you. You are neither the president's apologist nor therapist, um, but this will call for all your Donald Trump knowledge. What in his psyche 
um, prevents him from going out to make this right for two days, um, resists calling out Nazis, alt-right, white supremacists, white nationalists, uh, and forces him to ad-lib on many sides, the part of his remarks that uh, caused the most trouble. Uh, President Trump is never one to acknowledge a mistake. It is very rare that he accepts responsibility. It is very rare that he wants to publicly second guess himself or seem like he is caving to public pressure. He is susceptible to flattery. These are groups that speak highly of him. He knows on some <coughs> level that these are people who, at least some of them, support him and that he recognizes they are a small but energized part of the coalition of people that backed him last November. On Saturday, when he came out to give his initial statement in, at Bedminster, uh, he had told people around him that he wanted to really focus on the law and order aspect of this. And he came out there, he said uh, on many sides, which I think will be a phrase that will resonate for this president for a long time, uh, and then felt like he had done his job. Over the last two days, it was a firestorm of bipartisan criticism. People around him recognized, as our story indicates, that this was something that could really damage him going forward. They talked to him. He was reluctant. He told people around him that, that he was upset. He thought he was being treated unfairly. But he was eventually persuaded that he needed to go out there, go to the White House today, uh, and give this new, more forceful statement. Congressman, are, are you convinced to your satisfaction that because of the portion of the president's base made up by these folks we saw in Charlottesville and people sympathetic, maybe even secretly or quietly to their cause, that's why he took something off his rhetorical fastball on Saturday? You know, I've heard the, the commentary. I have no reason to, to not believe Jonathan. I have no, no reason to not believe those who say this is all about his base. But you, you have to wonder on a level. There are two groups that he's coddled and defended uh, without hesitation. Russians who apparently may have interfered with the election process in white supremacy. He's either pleaded that he didn't know them or didn't know much about them and was reluctant to, to, to answer. His fallback is always fake news when he doesn't like what people in the press are talking about. There's a 32-year-old woman who's dead. Now, I'm not blaming the president, but there's nothing fake about her death. And for this president to continue to put up this facade, uh, it's laughable at one level and tragic on a very real level. Uh, three, you watch him and you have to wonder, when he talks about fake news as well, what, are, what, are, what is the news media blocking him from getting accomplished in Congress? There's a Republican Congress that is now. I talked with a high-ranking Republican official this evening right before dinner who said, you've seen an array of Republicans from Pence, who about halfway did it overseas. He came back to clean it up because I guess he wanted to be accepted back at the White House. But Cory Gardner, Marco Rubio, Jeb Bush, uh, Orrin Hatch, who invoked his own family. It'll be curious to see if they sustain that kind of posture going forward and are willing to stand up to him in a real way. Uh, the fake news moniker, does it work going forward? We'll have, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I said it before, I thank Terry McAuliffe for his words because he was really the one that right away reassured and soothed America. Uh, but the most troubling thing out of all this in the president, I appreciate him being on record uh, 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 criticizing the alt-right and white supremacists, but he didn't criticize their behavior. He didn't lecture like he lectured uh, the, 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 CEO of Kit, uh, the CEO of Merck, saying you're going to go back and lower drug prices, a little cute shoot back at him. To not say to white supremacists, this is not who America is, not what my campaign is about, not what my presidency aspires to be about, I think says more about him than what he didn't do on Saturday. Anita Kumar, what a great community you are from, what a great university you were fortunate enough to attend. I am guessing uh, that growing up in Charlottesville, you did not associate anything there with the alt-right, with white nationalists, with neo-Nazis or the KKK, and yet, sadly, that great place is going to be tied, at least in our memory, at least for some time, with those awful causes. No, I mean, anyone who knows Charlottesville, it's a small liberal college town so you know it's very steeped in history though so there there are the statues mm -hmm. uh, i can see this uh, disagreement <coughs> happening but to keep hearing charlottesville it keeps it's very jarring to me every time i i hear it because no one really talks about it in that way and uh, just hearing about it this small town being on the map like this is it's incredible um, uh, anita five blocks from here the president uh -huh. is in new york right. his first night 
as president in the place, the steel and glass tower, the triplex he calls home in, in Trump Tower. And yet you see the sand-filled dump trucks at the entrance. That's kind of a relatively new Secret Service uh, vehicle control method. Uh, and yet because of his own doing, the crowds are larger, the crowds are louder than uh, they were during the campaign. Right. I mean, he did come out and have a do-over, if you will, today. And he said what he needed to say. But the question is, it took so long, is that, is that, uh, is that still going to hurt him? Is it too late? Um, he also didn't say a couple things. The congressman mentioned one thing. There were two other things he didn't say that people pointed out today that they wanted to hear. One, he didn't use the word terrorism. Now, members of his staff have, I believe the attorney general did, the national security advisor did, but people were listening and wanting to hear him say domestic terrorism. Um, and so it, it's just a question of, you know, whether it's enough. The other thing he didn't say was he didn't talk about uh, he didn't denounce them and say, these aren't my supporters. He didn't really say that either way. And I know people were sort of waiting for him to say, I denounce these people. They aren't my supporters. They aren't part of wh who I want to support me. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.